Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. In this video, I want to tell you what I'm most looking forward to coming in Alpha 3.9. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for all of the support. You guys are incredible. If you do enjoy my content and would like to support my channel even further from as little as $1 a month, getting your referral codes in my video. The link is in the description below. So, Alpha 3.9 is about a month away now and as we start rolling up on the release we will begin to see more of what is coming with the patch so in no particular order here is a list of what 3.9 features i am most looking forward to and why so with each patch that contains a major landing location we always see a collection of clothing to follow these clothing items are usually designed to represent each landing zone giving us a bit of an insight into the residence and the general vibe of that location for Microtech, this will be the same, but not just as an aesthetic representation, they'll also have practical use too. Now I'm sure we will see a large range of clothing from Microtech, and from what we've seen a little while ago, expect to see bright, vibrant, eclectic styles, potentially with some form of maybe neon lighting sewn in, which is something that they were exploring, which would be kind of cool in itself. Now the reason I'm excited for this collection is for the more practical uses to the clothing and armor. Now, it was mentioned in a monthly report a couple of months ago that the character team are wrapping up on four outfits for Microtech with focus on cold weather theming and variation, as well as this Caldera suit which we saw during the Citizen Con demo. We also heard they are focused on more diverse ammo with focus in other areas, not just combat. Whether we will see any of these armors for 3.9 is another thing, but now that clothes have to have some form of temperature rating, I think it'll be exciting to see what Microtech has to offer. Next up, we have prisons. Now, as fun as these will be, apart from the initial release, I don't actually plan to spend much time inside. With that said though, they really are creating a great system to accompany the law system, the reputation system, and the bounty system in kind of one foul swoop. Now, I do expect there will be multiple iterations on the prison and all the associated systems until it feels right and works well and all the kinks are ironed out. But ultimately, this adds much more depth to the game and gives criminals something to try and avoid uh, or not, depending on who you are and what you want to do. Uh, but it will also help to hopefully irritate the griefers to maybe think twice. Personally, prisons will be fun to explore and check out. But beyond that, I think I will be spending more time capturing bounties to put in them rather than spending time in them myself. Now, one massive feature which I am very excited for is the fully fleshed out landing zone of New Babbage. This is the main landing zone of the Microtech planet, and from what we've seen so far, it just looks incredible. I have flown around it so much, and I can't wait to explore it on foot. Unlike Area 18 and Lawville, New Babbage is not fenced in. It is completely open to explore. You can grab a rover and drive around, or you can just land anywhere you want. The internal city itself is inside large domes which all connect together giving you a nice view of the outside and it's going to look completely different to any of the landing zones we have had in the past. Microtech is very affluent and so the environment will reflect this by it being clean, being bright and very welcoming, very much unlike the dark and dingy streets of Lawville or Area 18. Now it looks so amazing being sprawled across a frozen lake, requiring a monorail ride from Spaceport to the city. I can just imagine taking that monorail and seeing the city just come closer, either at day or night, uh, whatever the weather may be as well. One other thing is that the hubs have amazing views through the windows. Imagine looking out while you're in your hub and just seeing players or AI going about their business, seeing storms rolling in or maybe the sun setting and rising. New Babbage is definitely going to be my new home from 3.9 onwards, and I cannot wait to get exploring it. So sticking with the Microtech theme, we are getting the three new moons of Microtech, which are Cleo, Euterpe, and Calliope. Now the special thing about these moons, which is probably one of the reasons I'm very excited to get exploring them, is that they have been created using 100% just Planet Tech version 4. There is no previous Planet Tech involved, so it will be very interesting to see if how much of a difference this will make. Also, looking at the most recent images of each of these moons, they do look so incredible. Two of them feature lakes, one frozen and one flowing. Calliope is looking like something straight out of an alien movie. Cleo has a very unusual pink glow, and Euterpe is more reminiscent of pitch black. 
Something that I think will make the exploration of these moons even more interesting is that each moon will have its harsh environment, requiring players to ensure they have outfits to allow them to travel round. I do look forward to maybe jumping into a Karak, wearing my environmental suit, exploring these moons uh, as much as the cold will allow me to. With that, let's talk about the next feature I'm excited for, which is the player status version 1. Now, from the leaks we have seen, don't worry, I won't spread any here, uh, the system is coming together perfectly. It appears simple enough for those who want to think about eating and drinking as little as often, but deep enough for those who want to get the best out of their character. Also, it is likely going to lend over to the medical profession once that begins to get further fleshed out. Needing to eat and drink is going to make long duration trips more immersive. If you get stranded as well on a planet or somewhere, you will need to survive. And this really opens the door for the more meaningful gameplay. Having to plan a mission rather than just mindlessly going back and forth like most games tend to do is something that has always been a big draw for me about Star Citizen. Aside from the eating and drinking aspects though, what is probably most exciting about this player status system is that environments will have temperatures that will affect the player in many ways. Extreme heat or extreme cold will have physical effects both internally and externally. Certain effects which again will play into the medical profession, having to treat players for hypothermia or hypothermia amongst others. With 3.9 we will begin to need to think about what we might be needing in terms of equipment and rations depending on where we're going and how long we expect to be there. I think this feature will really come into its own once physicalized inventories is implemented but at least for now this gives us a taste, pardon the pun, uh, of what is to come. Next up is the player interaction system. Now this I feel will make life for players so much easier, more responsive and a lot less long-winded. The interaction system will involve a new radial menu which allows us to quickly and easily perform various actions which currently require typing commands in chat or opening and navigating the Moby glass. Actions such as taking your helmet off so you can eat, accessing your personal inventory or even performing emotes. Not just that, but also giving us the option to favourite certain actions which we either use the most or just need quick access to. This will really streamline the way that gameplay feels and I think it's something that players are really going to appreciate. So I decided to add Surrender to my list. It's a little one, but I feel it touches many areas of the game. Maybe not present in Alpha 3.9, but for the future especially. The ability to surrender is going to be massively important once the death of the Spaceman comes in to affect and players' lives are limited. Even as early as 3.9 though, it does mean that we won't have to just die to be stopped. It also means that if you have accidentally gotten a crime stat through either a mistake or a bug, this will allow you to rectify that mistake instead of just being killed. Hopefully going forward, it means that your ship will be just impounded and the contents like cargo will remain inside rather than needing to be claimed and losing its goods. And I feel the option to surrender just makes gameplay flow a lot better. Also, for the bounty hunters, capturing a bounty is always a preferred method as it pays out better and it uses less ammo uh, and requires less threat. Initially, it'll not be super immersive and require you to grab the bounty and take him to the prison, but later on, I really hope it does. Now, next up is the Taveran Prowler, a unique ship, and to be the first of its kind fully realized in the verse. The Taveran Prowler is a reproduction of the infamous Taveran boarding ship, known for its incredible phalanx shields, not to mention just how badass it looks. Like with the Defender, though, this is driving the style guide for the Taveran lineup, which is also why I'm kind of unsure whether it'll make it into 3.9. I feel like with the Defender, it'll get pushed back again to allow CIG to just spend a little more time ensuring it looks as good as it can be. It may also be the first introduction to the upcoming Sign Distance Field Shield Tech. I am excited to see what they have done with this ship, which is why it's on my list, but ultimately, if it requires more time to look as good as it can be, then I'm fine with that. So last on my list is the upcoming Core Tech Weather Locomotion. Now, this isn't something which will bring incredible gameplay or exciting moments, but it does look pretty cool and will make Star Citizen even more immersive. So far, we know that if you're left out in the cold for too long, you will begin to shiver. Obviously, this will likely have effects on things like aiming, uh, but putting your hands in front of your face if it's windy or rainy will be another feature. Leaning into the wind depending on its actual direction as well. All of this will make exploring of locations feel just so good 
watching you and your crew make their way through the environment which is forcing them to react dynamically will be so incredible and I just cannot wait to see that and hopefully capture some footage to put into a video. So that is my list of why I am excited for Alpha 3.9 which as I say is coming at the end of March. Now there is always a chance of features to slip and like I've said the Prowler I wouldn't be surprised if that does. In fact the, all the ships for 3.9, uh, the M50 rework as well, I don't feel will make it in. But I do feel that everything else is definitely on track for the end of March. On the same token, however, we have seen CIG dropping more unexpected features with each patch. So there's a big chance for a few surprises, maybe even a straight to flyable ship. We are kind of overdue now for either a concept sale or a ship straight to flyable. I am really excited for this patch and I have been thoroughly enjoying three Alpha 3.8. So all the new additions will just be excellent. Anyway, do let me know what you are most excited for and why. Also, if I've missed anything off, drop it in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Star Citizen content and I will cover 3.9 in depth from all of its leaks all the way up to its releases and beyond. Do hit that like button if you're excited for 3.9 and follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrothersryan and come and hang out with us live. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members as always. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.